name's Allison. I am coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska, where I live on this dreary, supposed to be rainy day. Um, it is March 18th, and it is just about 10.30 in the morning. I am still drinking my first cup of coffee because I've been running around like crazy trying to get ready to podcast. And I am the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns, and I am Lofty Loops on Instagram. And you can see all my information at LoftyLoopsYarns.com. Links are down below. Um, and yeah, let's just get right into it. Last week, I did not podcast. <clears throat> we had, <clears throat> wow, we had family in town um, that don't come to town a lot, and um, some of them were the cousins of my kiddos, so my mother-in-law really wanted to get all of the grandkids together and do some photo shoots and just let them play because they don't see each other very often, so we did that for most of the weekend last weekend. Um, it was a lot of fun, but there wasn't a lot of downtime and there definitely wasn't time to podcast, so I'm sorry I missed a week, um, but to be honest, I really didn't have that much progress on anything that I wanted to share with you guys anyway. Um, I've been doing little bits on all of my whips instead of just picking one and sticking with it and getting a bunch of stuff done. Um, but I will have a little bit to show you today. I have a couple new cast-ons and I want to show you some things um, that might be heading into the shop, um, some shop news type things. And since it has been two weeks, I do have a lot of stash acquisition things to share with you. So. Stay tuned for that um, if you're interested, and let's just jump right in. So my intro that you just watched was a little clip of a peacock party hosted by Carla at Imagine Knits in Omaha, and um, that happened Friday night. She wanted to have a kind of a party or a strap your stuff party for all of the ladies that um, go there quite a bit to classes or just join in the knit night where they can bring in their handmaids that they had made from the shop for yarn from the shop um, and kind of just show them off, strut their stuff. So it was a blast. Um, so many gorgeous shawls and garments and blankets, the afghans. Oh my goodness, these ladies are fantastic. Um, but I had a lot of fun chatting with all of them. She asked me to come because she wants to carry Lofty Loops yarns in the shop. And so this was the big reveal of the new local indie dyer. Um, so I am very humbled and very thankful that she reached out to me for that. Um, so yeah, if you're in the Omaha area, check out Imagine Knits and she's got shelves full of Lofty Loops yarns where you can smoosh them and love them. Um, and that again is in Omaha. I will put links down below to where you can find the address or their Facebook page if you're interested in checking them out. Um, but it was also a great, a great chance to meet some of the people that I've been talking with online only. So um, people I feel like are friends, you know, via Instagram or YouTube, I've never met face to face. So it was so awesome to be able to sit down and do that. and. Um, I felt like felt like we're just old friends, like we've known each other forever. So it was so much fun. Um, I'm so grateful I got to be a part of that. And um, I will try to remember to put some photos at the end of this, but I honestly, I didn't take that many photos. I didn't take that much video because I was so busy talking and running around and let's be honest, shoving my face full of snacks. And um, I just, my phone stayed put away. Um, but I believe all the photos that I took I've already posted on Instagram, so if you want to see them, you can run over there and check them out. And there might be more photos of that party to come, because I know Jessica was running around and taking pictures like crazy. So once they get posted, um, that'll be a lot of fun to see too. So let's see, jumping in, checking my timer, because I always, my camera shuts off on me, so I have to set a timer. But um, jumping into Administrati, we are still running two different cows or co-hosting two cows, and I have to admit I've been terrible at actually contributing my projects 
<laughs> to both of them. But we have the Hypno Loop sweater along, and that kicked off February 1st, and I'm running that with Cheryl from Hypnotic Yarn. And she has the FO thread in her Ravelry group. I have the chatter thread in mine, and we've already drawn two random winners from that chatter thread. So if you're interested in knitting a garment, if you're already working on a garment or a sweater or a cardigan, jump in there, um, chatter away, share your projects, and you can be eligible to win. And I've talked about this um, on every podcast, so this shouldn't be new news, but if you want more info, check out down below in the show notes, and all of it will be there. Um, and we have the Sue Shui Shrug Along that is going, and I've written down everyone's names so I don't forget them, but I am running that with Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, Hannah from the Corner of Craft, Tristan with Dragon Horde Yarn, and Christy from Yarn Cafe Creations, and Tristan and Christy have the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. So, again, I'm terrible at contributing. I am really not feeling the pattern. Um, it's a lovely pattern, and the finished objects or the finished shawls or shrugs I've seen are gorgeous, and I love them. <clears throat> I just don't know if it's for me. Um, I just am not enjoying the process of knitting it. Um, however, I do love my yarn choices I've made, so it's kind of been a time out. Um, it might get the frog. I'm still trying to decide, so I made no progress on that. I'm sorry, but I will still be more than happy to see everyone's works in progress or finished products um, in my chatter thread on Ravelry. So please continue to share, even if I'm not sharing my progress, um, because I will be drawing, you know, winners from there, and I know they all have chatter threads as well in their Ravelry groups, and you feel free to post in all of them. Um, it just ups your chances for prizes. So, again, all that information is down below. Sorry, my hair is still damp um, and driving me nuts currently, so I will try not to well, mess with it a bunch, but apologies. Um, what I'm wearing, I am wearing my Roshri Girl shawl, like I do. Um, it is made from Cascade Heritage, which is the teal color, and Madeline Tosh Light, which is in Mandala. So, and I've shared it before. Um, all the information is on my Ravelry project page, so you can check that out if you're um, wanting to know more about it. But I wear this all the time. It's my favorite. As soon as I finish my exploration station, I'm sure that will be my new favorite because I want to wear it so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to just hurry up. I think I have, I'm on the second to last section, so at this point I really have no good reason why I haven't finished it. It's just purely cast on itis. I just keep casting on everything else, um, which you'll see here shortly. Um, so let's see. I have no finished objects of my own because like I said, I just keep either casting on new things or just working little bits, keep working little bits at a time on all of my projects that I have. I have so many things on the go. I just need to, I just need better discipline. I need to sit down and work on one thing and just get it finished and off the needles, but I think I have knitting ADD where I, I'm constantly jumping, I'm bouncing all over the place, and I just, I see, I, I see a new project or I see a new pattern and I'm like, I really want to do that and while I add it to my queue or my favorites, it sits in the back of my brain and it just sits there and it bugs me until I do something about it. Um, so that is a thing, and that's part of the reason why I don't have any finished objects. I do, however, have a couple finished objects that one of my sample knitters knit for me, um, so wonderfully, and she is Amy from, um, from Omaha, Nebraska, and I got to meet her Friday night, and that was a blast, um, but she offered to knit up a couple socks for me for samples, and I adore them. So 
I'll just show those real quick. Um, but this is She Knit at Hermione's Everyday Sock in the Dinikin colorway. And I believe this is the, the MCN sock. But I love it so much. And the, the cuffs and heels and toes were just minis, um, coordinating minis I sent to her. So she just did a fantastic job. I'll throw it on a blocker quick. But this colorway is just a soul in my heart. It's so pretty and I love the patterning on it. I love the Hermione's every day. I've attempted to knit it a few times but it's not one of those mindless knits for me. I can't just do it. Um, and then I end up screwing up the pattern and then I end up frogging and it's a mess. So eventually I'd love to knit some Hermione's every day, um, but it needs to be at a time when I'm ready to sit down and focus. Um, but yeah, so this is Dinna Kin and I know it's still available on DK in the shop. I can't remember if it's still on sock and MCN sock, but um, please feel free to run over and check it out. It'd be at loftyloopsyarns.com. You can search um, by yarn weight. So, but yeah, gorgeous. Thank you, Amy. So appreciative. And the other one that I sent to her, I also love, and I love the way it worked up. I've only ever seen it in a shawl format, so seeing it as a sock is really exciting um, but this is blue heart lily and it I love the way it micro stripes I just think that's so fun it does not micro stripe on the shawl I've seen so again the coordinating mini um, for the heels cuffs and toes but and this is just plain vanilla but she did such a wonderful job and she was so quick I think I sent the yarn to her like two weeks ago so holy moly she's got fast fingers <laughs> but yeah so these are a couple new samples um, for my shop and I'm so happy to have them and I just I love the way that they both worked up and I know that you guys are always interested in seeing um, kind of how things work up and it's nice to have samples but at the same time it's kind of a it's kind of a catch-22 because you see the samples, but that doesn't mean if you buy the yarn, because it is small batch and it's very highly variegated, and your gauge matters, and your needles matter, and the pattern matters. So a sample is not a end-all be-all of what it will look like for you, um, but they do give you a nice you know, they give me a nice idea of what might happen. So, so thank you, Amy, so much for doing that. Um, I might hit you up in the future if you're interested um, to crank out some more socks for me because you are just seriously so quick and I appreciate it so, so much. Um, so those are my only finished objects and they're not even my finished objects and um, they're just just half objects. I just had her knit up um, one sock a piece, so um, otherwise I'd be way too tempted to keep them and wear them. <laughs> and they're not for me, they're for the shop. They're for markets. <laughs> not to wear on my feet, even though I did try both of them on and they were so soft and they fit like a gem. <laughs> um, but moving on, I'm going to not put them on my feet anymore. I'm going to save them and they'll be nice and ready to go during market. I have like a frog in my throat. My mug is from Paint Yourself Silly, one of those places where you can go pick out your little ceramic item, object, um, and you can paint it yourself and then they fire it in the kiln and glaze it for you and then you go back and pick it up and actually the date on here says 2011 so this mug's been around for quite a while i 
I'm drinking the last of my coffee that Amy from um, Toronto sent me, and it's the Jimmy's Coffee. It's so good. And this is the last, the last pot I have. So, that's unfortunate. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Nothing will taste as good. Okay, moving on. More knitting things. Less coffee talk. Um, so I'm going to move into my whips. I can show you quickly living in my sugar tox bag. I have put quite a bit of more of a dent into my Sugar Plum Bay socks. Um, this is my go-to project for TV watching or movie watching where we, if we shut off the lights and we're watching a movie and I really want to focus on the screen, but I want my hands to keep going. Um, this is what I pick up. So I've, there's probably, I know at least two movies worth in here. Um, so it's, it's going, um, and again, this is the second sock. The other one is finished and, um, all ready to go, but I don't know. It's going. Nothing to write home about. Nothing super exciting. Um, last night we, we did watch Mute, which is a Netflix original starring Alexander Skarsgård and... Paul Rudd is in it and I was so excited to watch this movie and then we watched it and I was like well that happened so it was okay um, but I knitted quite a bit in the dark <laughs> on that last night <clears throat> so what I really am excited to share with you guys is I finally cast on my Zwag. I couldn't, I couldn't deny it anymore. I've got hair all over. I've seen so many finished Zwag sweaters and I want one so bad. So I cast on. I did it. And I am knitting it in a brand new color that I dyed specifically with this project in mind. Um, but it will stay a shock regular. It is the... Neptune colorway and I am knitting my swag 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 I am knitting it on singles so I know Kristen with the Orgasm podcast knit hers out of singles um or single ply and we all know how much I love single ply yarn so I know it's a risk being that it's a, a sweater um but I'm going to do it and it's going to be so soft and so squishy and at the end of the day I might just have to hang it up and stare at it instead of wear it. But I'm really excited to see how this goes. So for the, for the neck ribbing I did a 2x2 two two rib instead of a 1x1 one one, um, because I, I like the look of a 2x2 two two rib more. Let me see if I can. And I... And yes, last night I finished the, um, there's some short row shaping for the back of the neck. So this isn't going to lay nice for you on these needles, but um, you can kind of see the short row shaping here. And now I'm just moving right along with a few more rounds before I start the color work. And I'm excited for the color work. I haven't done color work in quite a while. Um. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I was having kind of a crisis yesterday because I wasn't sure. I was having second thoughts about my coordinating color because I knew I wanted to use Grandpa's Farm Truck by Artistic Lily because I love that color. But I think it's going to blend too much with this Neptune. Um, and I don't have the skein with me to show you, but check my Instagram. Um, you can see it there. So I went stash diving and found some skinny singles from Hedgehog Fiber and Urchin. And it does have some little speckles of kind of a darker gray, almost this blue. Um, but it also has like blips of pink. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. I love, I love the color. 
Um, I just don't know if I'm going to love it for this project. But I'm going to kick it up and I'll see how it goes, at least working through the color work. But yeah, so Grandpa's farm truck is going to have to be its own glorious project. I just don't know what yet. Um, and I'm knitting, I knit the ribbing on the US size 3, the 3.25 millimeter. And then this is a US 5, 3.75 millimeter. And these are Haya Haya Sharps. Um, my size 3s are Chiaogu's, the red lace. And I have to say, I love the Chiaogu cord much more than this I, I, I had to soak it in boiling water um, pulling it out of the package before I could even use it but oh well I love the Haya Haya Sharp needles but I love the Chiaogu Red Lace cord so if those two could just get together and maybe have some drinks and you know make some knitting needle babies that'd be great until then, I'll just, you know, love them both for different reasons. Another project I wanted to share with you because I have made quite a bit of progress on it. Um, living in my Sugar Tots sushi bag. My adorable little pins that I've shared before. I've got my Wisteria Lane socks going. Oh, and I have got a mess here um, and I am attempting these two at a time um, I've tried two at a time before but it just it always seemed too fiddly for me <clears throat> so I would just end up pulling one off the needles and then working them concurrently but so far so good knock on wood um, I am Knitting the socks on a plane with the little cable up the sides like I did with my cat sandwich fibers socks last month but this is oh my gosh I'm, let's see if I can untangle this mess here um, this is again see this is why I don't mess with this it's like a puzzle a little bit better. Um, so I just love the way Wisteria Lane is knitting up and there is some in the shop still. I know it's still on DK in the shop. I'm pretty sure I still have it on a couple of my sock faces and yes for next week I want to be able to dye it up on some single ply and of course replace what's missing but the toes are just a coordinating mini. Again, um, my minis, I I tend to just throw them in the pots when I'm done with a dye session and they soak up all the excess the dyes from speckling or my utensils or whatever I'm cleaning. Um, I just clean them all in a pot and then I toss a mini in or toss a couple minis in. So they're all one of a kind usually. Um, but I'm ending up having quite a collection of minis that coordinate with some of the things I've been dying. So it's really nice to be able to just grab one for um, heels, cuffs, and toes. And I think I might start listing them in the shop if, if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, again, they won't be like specific colorways. They'll just be like mini one, mini two, you know, and then you can judge by the photo if something that you want um, they won't have names or anything so but I love 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 the speckles in here the variegation just the little blips of the greens and the dark purples and I'm really really enjoying these socks and I'm really happy with this new colorway so here are the cakes and I did split this one in half um, because there was no way I was going to attempt two at a time 
pulling from the inside and the outside of one cake. I would have gone insane. <laughs> if anyone knows a tip, please leave it down below. I would love to hear it. But until now, I just have these and then I maneuver them around in the bag as I go. Um, I am knitting these on a US size 2, 2.75 millimeter on my Chiagu Red Lace. As per usual, um, I do jump back and forth quite a bit between ones and twos because I have only a set amount of ones, but I seem to have an awful lot of twos because that's what I started knitting socks with. So I don't prefer one over the other. I just know to change up my sock recipe or my number, my cast on number, or my um, increase to number for the foot, depending on what size needle I'm using. But so I can show you here. This is on a size one, this is on a size two, so there's a smidgen of a difference in stitch size, but not enough that I prefer one over the other. And I've got my little green tea tea bag from Christy with Sugar Tots. And I think he matches perfectly with the little blips of green on there. So making quite a bit of progress. Um, I'd say I have uh, two and a half, maybe more inches until I get to the heel. And I will probably most likely be doing a fish lips kiss heel because I have not attempted the heel flap and gusset on a toe up sock. I know it's possible. I just have not attempted it. So again, if anyone knows of any great patterns out there or recipes for that, leave it down below because I'd love to know. Because um, I think I prefer a heel flap and gusset, how it fits over the fish lips kiss. But the fish lips kiss is so simple that it's just done, quick and easy to do. So, oh, I have one more thing because, duh, like cast on something new, why not? And actually this cast on is not even a pattern I'm making it up who am I I don't do these things but there was a, a girl at work a while back who had some fingerless mitts and I believe she said she got them at Target or Walmart or something but I thought they were the cutest things and my hands are forever freezing at work and I really want some fingerless mitts so I can continue typing and working while, you know, having my hands semi-covered up. So I started looking at her mitts one day while we were at lunch and I was like, I feel like I could kind of interpret this. So I went out on Ravelry and I was searching to see if there was any sort of pattern or recipe like it. Um, and I wasn't finding anything. There were some a bit similar, but not like what I was picturing in my brain. So I went ahead and started working it up. And this is in DK. And it is just one color brioche. And it's got a one by one rib for the cuff. Then you go straight into the brioche. And here in a little bit, I will start the thumb gusset so I really kind of want it to let's see if I can toss it on quick I've seen some where they just have a slit for the thumb but I really want my thumb to have its own thumb gusset thumb hole if you will so here it is on I want it to come up just about to here then I'll separate for the thumb and continue on up the hand until maybe about here um, or about where my knuckle is on my index finger. However, that means I need to figure out how to increase with brioche, with one color brioche. And I know it's doable. I've done it before. It's just making it up without having <laughs> the written instructions in front of me is a little mind boggling. Um, they're so squishy. So yeah, let me know what you think about these. If anything, if I've 
I get one done and I like where it's at and I finish the other one, um, I mean, I just want them to wear at work, but if it's something that you guys would really, really want to see a pattern for, um, I will make it presentable and then I'll have people test knit. Um, and like I said, this is in DK, hair all over, and this is in my Sunday morning remix colorway, which is similar to my Sunday morning color that I'm knitting my campsite cardi out of, but instead of using just blue and pink, I'm also using like a fluorescent purple. So it's got just a bit more neon speckly blips than, than the subtleness of the blue and pink in Sunday morning. So um, I do have, I believe, three of these in um, My lovely camera cut me off again, but I was saying I do have three of these. I think three more in DK in the shop um, if you guys want to check them out. Um, it's a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon DK weight. Um, and this is Sunday Morning Remix. I have pre-orders for just normal Sunday morning also in the shop, but I don't have any in stock, but if you're wanting like a sweater quantity, um, that pre-order is there. But I have three of these, and I am knitting these on a size 4, 3.5 millimeter Chiavi Red Lace, and I just, I love how squishy the fabric is, because brioche is squishy anyway, but just with this plump DK base. It's just, oh, I'm excited to have these done if, if my brain can figure out how to do a thumb gusset. I've never done fingerless mitts before. Maybe I should have started with like a simple pair of fingerless mitts before I just jumped feet first into, hey, let's make it up as I go. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll all work out. And I'm kind of debating on whether I like the one by one rib or if I maybe prefer a two by two. I know for my socks I always prefer a two by two and I did a two by two on my swag. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. So that's all I have in terms of works in progress to show you. Like I said, there's tons more but nothing you guys would be interested in seeing um, not a lot of not a lot of <laughs> anything has been done I did put a few rows in on my expiration station and a few rows in on my uh, campsite party but you guys won't even be able to see a difference so let's see stash acquisitions I've been ordering a lot of yarn. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and being that it's been two weeks since I podcasted, kind of everything came in. <laughs> um, so, you know, in my brain, I feel like, for some reason, I feel like I have more because I'm showing it all to you now than if I had split it week by week. But in reality, it's still... What does Kristen say? Wool piggery? Yeah. So, if you guys have been watching in the past, um, you know that I knit my um, sushi shrug with Jessica Jones from Casual Fashion Queen, as well as a Cascade Heritage or Cascade 220, just a standard gray. Um, but, before I decided that I really wasn't feeling the sushi shrug, um, I was like, oh my gosh, Sheena, I need another skein of Jessica Jones because this one is not going to be enough. So I caught one of her updates and I ordered another skein. So this is Jessica Jones in all her glory. So now I have two of these. And I kind of feel like I want to frog my shrug 
and then use the two Jessica Jones together for something else. But why I don't know what that is. But this is on her plump merino base. So it's an 80-20 superwash merino or nylon. 400 yards, 100 grams. And I just look at those speckles. And the pinks, um, I think this was one of, Jessica Jones was one of the first skeins I had ever purchased from Sheena. Um, and it was early on in my purchasing of indie dyed yarns. Um, and I've been coveting it ever since. <laughs> So I'm happy now that I have two. I'm just not super happy with the thought of them going into the Sue Shui Shrub. Stay tuned. Anyway, um, and then that wasn't all I ordered from one of Sheena's updates. I caught another update and grabbed some Bohemia on her sparkle face or her gold Stellina. And it's a 70-25 split, so superwash merino nylon and gold selena. This is like a um, bohemia. So pretty. I don't know what it's going to be, but I saw it and had to have it. I've been doing this a lot. I've Actually, I've mentioned this to quite a few people lately that I see things in shops and I'm like, that's pretty, I want it. And I grab it to hoard it but I don't have a project in mind for it. I need to be better about only buying things that I know I have a project in mind for. It says every knitter ever, right? <laughs> um, and I grabbed her March um, Mystery Club. So this is March 2018, and it is on her <clears throat> plump base as well. So it's the 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. And while I thought it was gorgeous when I got it in the skein, I actually, I opened it up after I got it and was like, it got so much prettier. So look at these speckles. Oh my goodness. I think it's going to have to be a pair of socks. But yeah, I was just like, what? Sheena is like the speckle queen. What is that? Oh, so good. So, thank you, thank you, Sheena. Um, there will be much more to come, I am sure. But I'm happy to have another Jessica Jones, and I am happy that I was able to snag a Mystery Club because I love Mystery Club so much. Um, and I was just over the moon excited when I saw what March was. So, thank you very much. And I was perusing <clears throat> Instagram like I do and happened upon a uh, Valkyrie Fibers post that um, she had she had put up and I don't know if she was working on a pair of socks or if it was just in the gobstopper form but I immediately went to her shop and was like yep purchase. So here's her tag. Valkyrie Fibers. Lauren. And it came with an adorable little stitch marker and a super nice handwritten note. But this is the Jagerbomb colorway. And many of you probably don't know this about me yet, but um, I love Jagerbombs. I love Jaeger. It's my drink of choice when I go out. Um, yeah, I'll drink it straight. I never was in on the, like the college party days where it was like Jagerbaum after Jagerbaum or whatever, you know, the whole like hype of it. I just found out somehow that I enjoy Jaeger a lot. Um, I don't so much enjoy the Red Bull portion so recently I've switched it and I drink it now with root beer. Um, but every now and again I'll tend to get a little crazy and I'll have some some Jaeger and Red Bulls <clears throat> in a cup, like with ice. Like that's how I order it. So I order a Jaeger bomb in a cup with ice to make it fancier. Um, but I saw this and I had to have it 
because it's Jagerbomb self-striping yarn. And it came with this mini, which is just perfect. And it's called Teenage Rage, which I think is hilarious. But it's like the green of a Jaeger bottle. <laughs> I had to have it, so I'm so excited to knit up some Jaeger bomb socks. And I think once they're done, I will have to celebrate by drinking some Jaeger bombs. So super excited about this one. Um, this is my first Valkyrie Fibers yarn I've had. So really excited to get it cast on. However, I'm trying to be good and bide my time. Um, and it is her matte sock base. So it does a 25 or 75, 25 superwash merino deck. Superwash merino and nylon. See, I'm getting all flustered over Jaeger bombs. So yeah, I'm so excited about that. Um, and now you know, if you ever go out to have drinks with me, be prepared for Jaeger bombs. Uh, let's see, and Friday night when I was at the Peacock Party at Imagine Knit, Amy, who knit my sample socks for me, was also having a pop-up shop there, which I was super excited and surprised to find out. Um, but she is the bag maker behind Luna Pie Designs on Etsy. And I had to, I saw this walking by, I think before the party even started. <laughs> and I was like, mine, <laughs> I just grabbed it and threw it in the back. Um, but this is one of her small wide mouth bags. And look at how fun this pineapple print is. And there's things inside but it's got wire in it so it opens and it stays open really wide and it's just like a great little bag and I've got a lot of stuff in here um, all of the rest of my acquisitions from that night are in here but I don't know I just I I know I've scoped out her Etsy shop before and I knew I saw this pineapple bag and whether it was in the large size or the smaller size I can't remember but I just never pulled the trigger on it and I'm glad that I grabbed one now and I'm glad that I got to do it there in person because I feel like purchasing things from handmakers in person is that much more special than just ordering them online. Um, so yes, she has an Etsy shop. I will link it down below. Um, she has large bags, bigger than this, and I think this is her small bag. She has bento bags, and she has a ton of um, DPN um, cozies, or like the little needle minders, the snaps. Um, so check her out. She rocks. And inside, I picked up a skein of Sweet Georgia and the Tough Love Sock in Rainbow Sprinkles. And they had a whole bunch of Sweet Georgia set aside with all of her mini skein kits. And it was setting beside this pattern, which is Starburst. Um, with the idea in mind that this main color is a large skein and then the mini skeins are faded. Um, in the texture and it looks like yarn overs maybe. I don't know, I haven't really dug into the pattern and I probably shouldn't share since it's not a free pattern, but um, not wanting to do too much damage, I did not grab one of the mini skein kits, but I did grab the, the big skein and then the pattern and the needles for it so I could make one of these. And I think I'm just gonna use some of my minis instead or I have some other mini kits that I purchased or been gifted so I think I'm going to dig around in my stash for the minis um, because really it's rainbow sprinkles so there's so many different colors in here that anything could go but I think this will be really pretty in that big the white block so it'll have blips of color and then it will have the fading rainbow so that's really exciting and the rest of the things are not 
as exciting. I mean, they are for me, but I've just picked up a couple more sets of needles. These are the ones for my Zweig. So I had sharps and these Chiaogus. And I finally, finally got myself some highlighter tape because I scribble all over my papers when I am working on patterns or I cross things out or I check mark and then I make another check mark and then I X that out for the next repeat and it's, it's a mess. So yay, a highlighter tape. So genius, who would have even thought? Anyway, so those were my purchases from, oh, and I got a Leon Alexander pen. Look at how sparkly it is. So excited. I saw um, he posted some that he had some in on Instagram and I ran over and I grabbed one and I also grabbed his mystery club that won't come until April. So he, he went ahead and sent the pen early, which I am super stoked about. Um, but then I'll be getting one of his mystery club skeins this next month. So it's so awesome. And he's got better photos on Instagram, but uh, the sparkle of the lion is just perfection. So awesome. Um, and yeah, it, I think it looks super cool on this. I immediately threw it on this bag as soon as I got the bag home Friday night. And I think it looks really cool on here. So I've got all my enamel pins all over the place on all my bags. I share the love. <laughs> um, that is all I have for you as far as stash acquisitions go. I feel like there's there was a lot this week, but it was, you know, over the course of two weeks. And there were some other <clears throat> purchases I made that weren't, <clears throat> sorry, that weren't super yarny related, um, but more in terms of my business. So I got a spin dryer. Oh man, game changer. If you are an indie dyer or if you are dabbling in dyeing yarn or, um, seriously, I don't know why I waited so long to grab one of these. Everyone says that. Everyone's like, don't wait, get it, get it now. And I was like, nah, I'm fine. We have nice, you know, winter, or not winter, but nice spring, summer days. I can just put it outside and it'll dry. No, the spin dryer is life. I can toss in, you know, after I wash and rinse the skeins, I give them a nice little squeeze to squeeze out the excess, but then I toss them in the spin dryer and let it run for me a minute and the amount of water that comes out of these things is absurd and then once I take them out of the spin dryer and I hang them over there on my rack they're dry in like two hours three four tops what game changer before I was waiting like two days I'd have to hang them if I couldn't hang them outside I had to hang them like in my shower so they would just be constant dripping what a mess. And then, you know, my kids would be like, Mom, I have to shower. And I'm like, stop, my yarn's in there. So it's all very, very professional here, I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, the spin dryer, oh, life, so good. Run, get one now if you're an indie dyer. If you don't have one, if you are an indie dyer that uses one, give me a virtual slap because I should have got one sooner. Um, but mine, I'm looking at it over here. It's the Laundry Alternative by Nina. And I just picked it up on Amazon. Oh my goodness. So good. So much more yarn can happen now. So excited. Okay. That is all I have for you in terms of regular podcasting content. Um, I do want to talk just for a little bit about... Um, shop things. Um, if you guys are interested in hearing about shop things, feel free to cut out. I want to thank you for um, being patient with me last week and now um, watching watching this week. Um, I'm still kind of attempting to figure out the lighting, location, camera stuff. Um, but I think I, I think I might have a handle on it now. So give me a 
give me a thumbs up if you're cool with the setup the way it is now. And I finally kicked that autofocus right in the keister. No more of that annoying autofocus sounds. We're done with that. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Um, but if you're interested for some shop news um, and seeing some of the things that I've put in the shop recently or that are headed to the shop next Saturday, stick around. And all right, looking at my notes, I put a Instagram story poll up yesterday because in talking with some people Friday night and in hearing some things you guys have been saying online recently, I'm getting a lot of requests for a sparkle base, probably a sock base. I've dyed up a single ply sparkle before, which you guys have seen me use in um, in my exploration station. I dyed impromptu on that to go along with my exploration station. I love it personally because I love a single ply yarn and I love sparkle and it looks fantastic in my exploration station. However, I don't know that you guys love single ply as much as I do. Judging by how quickly the single ply leaves the shop, I'm not sure I want to carry a second single ply base just to have the sparkle in it, but I did post a, um, or like I mentioned, I, I posted a Instagram story with a poll in it asking if you guys wanted to see a sparkle base. And it was overwhelmingly yes. Um, so that's really exciting. And then I had a secondary poll asking that if you did want to see a sparkle base, would you rather have silver Selena or gold Selena? And again, it was overwhelmingly silver Selena, which I am happy to hear because I think a lot of my colorways will work really well with some um, silver Stellina sparkle in there. So that hopefully will be coming in the near future. Can you even imagine, um, I have a skein here of Mermaid Lagoon, which I love, but could you imagine it in sparkle? Oh, it's got to happen. I, I just, it's, it's got to happen. So super exciting thanks um thank you you guys for answering my poll um, another thing that i got to play around with and if you follow me on instagram you already know um but i picked up another base and it is a mohair base so this is kid mohair and silk and let's see, I did put some labels on some of these just so I could remember um, what they are, but none of them are named. They were just purely playing. Um, so 70% kid mohair, 30% silk, and it is 50 grams, 460 yards, and it is a lace weight. So I started playing around, just throwing some dye on just to see how it would take. Um, I really am loving this gray and I could definitely see this being held together with um, a fingering weight yarn in some sort of marled something or uh, maybe a hat Ugh. and this again was just something I was playing with so this is a very creamy creamy base with some darker groups of color um, I'm not prepared yet to put mohair into the shop. I want to knit with it and get a feel for it first before I offer it to you guys. Um, but if it's something that you guys are into seeing, if you guys want to see mohair in the shop for spring, summertime, um, leave a comment down below, give me a thumbs up, let me know. Um, shoot me a message on Instagram with your thoughts and feelings. But here's another couple. So I got a very hot pink, which is just gorgeous. And then a fluorescent purpley. It's got some 
it's fun how this space takes the dye. So for example, you can see here some of it is very purpley, very blue purple, but then the the silk in it really took the pink. So it's got this kind of dual tone thing going on. It's very cool. Um, so I've had a lot of fun playing around with it. And I think in terms of finding finding a good project for it, um, just to test it out, because I am a mohair noob. I have not used mohair in any projects before, um, but I'm very excited to try. But I ended up dyeing this up. So this is Mermaid Lagoon on my 8020 sock base, and I threw a mohair in the pan with it. So this is Mermaid Lagoon, um, which you can see how differently the colorways come out on mohair. That's why I'm not sure if I'll, if I do carry it, I might not have specific colorways um, per se, but I might just do a bunch of tonals or, um, you know, uh, solid colors. But I think this might be a birds of a feather shawl because, you know, I really need to cast on another project. <laughs> um, but I think it will be gorgeous, and I really want to use Mermaid Lagoon in something, and this Mermaid Lagoon mohair is just perfect for it as well. So that might happen soon. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your feedback on the mohair mohair trend. Is it a trend? Is it is it here to stay? Um, mohair heading into summertime? Is that, I mean it's a lace weight so it's light, but again it's, it's very warm. So let me know what you guys are thinking. I'd love to hear your feedback. So yeah, possible sparkle base, which will probably, let's be honest, is probably going to happen, and possible mohair. So I'm excited. Um, bulky, as you know, I used to carry a bulky base um, that is gone probably until fall. I, I will bring it back this fall um, and into winter, but I just, it didn't seem like people were head over heels for it, and um, we definitely don't need any, any bulky heading into the warmer months. So there's that. So, shop update. I had a shop update yesterday. There are still skeins in the shop. Um, let me see here. Grabbing, grabbing. Um, Neptune, which I showed you, is a brand new color dyed specifically with my Zoetic in mind. Um, but I dyed it on my normal sock base, my 8020 two ply sock, as well as a single ply. Single plies are gone, but there are still. These might be the only two left, actually. So there's still a couple on the sock base left. Um, I am hoping to have it on DK here in the next shop update or two. Um, so, so gorgeous. I don't know, it's probably terribly blown out, um, but it's just this deep, lots of different depths of tones of blues um, with a with a dark gray, almost black glazing on top. Fairly um, Madeline Tosh-esque, if you will. Some of, some of her colorways are um, just that depth of different tones and colors in there. Um, so yeah, I am loving how it's knitting up on, um, on my swag. So they're in the shop. Grab them if you'd like. Um, I also threw in some more uh, raspberry cream. Raspberry cream on single ply is so yummy. And on 8020 sock. Um, and these are just very loosely tied. I wanted to get them in a presentable manner for you guys. But Here's the raspberry cream, and I know it was a hit at Imagine It for the Peacock Party, and it's just so pretty. Um, so there are a few skeins of this in the shop right now. 
So grab them if you want them. And this was a, this is not in the shop, so these will be going in the next update. But this is um, a test skein that I did when I was trying to come up with a, a contrasting color for my swag. And it ended up being too similar. Um, just wasn't enough contrast. Still gorgeous. But um, I did write down the recipe and this might have to stay. But for right now, it's just a one of a kind. Only one of them will go in the shop unless I decide to dye more. But it's very, it's no name yet. But it reminds me of almost like a rain cloud. So it's, it's really light, really gray. And again, I'm going to take photos and I'll get them posted on Instagram so you can see it better. Um, but yeah, very pretty. Just very cloud-like. Of course, on single ply. I love single ply. And last but not least, Real quickly, I wanted to share with you another fun colorway that's heading into the shop next weekend. But I brought back 700 Jump St. Healthy Boy, and that is a Guardians of the Galaxy 2 reference. If you guys know me, you know I love Guardians of the Galaxy and specifically Groot. Um, but this was inspired by when, let's see, it's Yondu and Groot and Rocket are trying to get, I think they're trying to get to Ego's planet, or at least back to the other Guardians, I can't remember for sure, but they decide to do the warp drive, and they go through too many jumps at once, and then they all kind of go berserk and bonkers, and uh, it's a fun scene, so. So it's lots of speckles, and here I have it on sock, not stain, so you can just see the amount of rainbowy speckles. And I haven't dyed this in almost a year, um, so I'm really excited to have dyed it again. And it's fun to see how my process has changed a bit in the last year, how much I've learned as far as speckles are concerned, um, and these are just... So pretty, so much color. So be on the lookout for those. I will definitely have it on sock and singles. Um, I've never dyed it on DK, but I would be interested to see what that would look like. If you guys want it on DK, um, leave me a note. Let me know on Instagram. But yeah, I so pretty. I just so much speckly goodness. I mean, can you guys... I may have to snag one for myself, but I won't. I'll leave them for you. Oh, and I did not grab any of the full skeins, but again, um, this Sunday morning remix is in the shop. So that was new going in yesterday. Um, and that you can't really tell here as it's wrapped into my yarn ball, but um, it's really pretty. So I think that's it for this week. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me. Please give me feedback on um, the mohair and the sparkle sock if those are things that you guys are really wanting. Again, like I said, the mohair I'm probably going to play with for a little bit so that might not be introduced. Um, until closer to this summer, I might wait a couple months for that so I can really get a feel for it. Um, but Sparkle Sock, I'm no stranger to Sparkle Sock. So uh, I, I could possibly see myself ordering up some of that for you guys. And yeah, again, there's just there's some of my colorways that I would really love to see on a Sparkle base. So leave me a comment down below if, you know, even if it's like, a thumbs up emoji, if it's like a hooray, ta-da emoji, whatever, what have you, leave me a beer clinking, I don't care. Um, that will just let me know that you guys are on board. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. There should be a link down in the doobly-doo or in the corner of the video that you can just click to subscribe and you will be updated when I upload new podcasts. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, I really love hearing your guys' feedback that way. 
and just knowing that I'm not here talking to myself. Not that I don't mind talking to myself, but it's nice to know that there are people on the other end <laughs> that are um, at least listening, half listening. If you've got this running in the background while you're knitting or doing housework or what have you, um, I am no stranger to that either. I tend to turn on other podcasts and keep them going um, in the background for company. So I'm happy to be your company while you're knitting or doing housework or homework or whatever it may be. So yeah, um, I guess that's all I got for you. So until next week, I hope you guys had a fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Um, I was very much just a homebody yesterday. We didn't celebrate or get in any festivities, but um, just spent a nice, quiet evening at home. And um, yeah, looking forward to kids going back to school next week and getting back into our normal routine. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you next weekend. Bye!